What's going on guys? Welcome to NetSec Explain. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take advantage of cross-site request forgery for web app security testing. CSRF attacks are a bit interesting. What they do is allow an attacker to make a vulnerable system perform some function on a user's behalf using that user's own browser. Let me explain. Say you use your browser for some online service, and I know this. Then, let's say one day I get you to visit my website and when you click on the link, the website redirects you back to the service that goes to the account deletion page. You're only able to access that page because you're already logged in. Now, with CSRF, I could actually delete your account because it thinks that it was you who went to that account deletion page. That's kind of scary. So, to identify and test for CSRF vulnerabilities, you need three things to line up. First, you need a website that has a URL that performs some action on or on behalf of an authenticated user account. Think of something along the lines of sending money or changing a password or deleting the account. Then, the URL must be able to be referenced directly by an authenticated user to perform that action. This means that you don't need to retype in a password or verify some check, and the URL is always the same. At this point, we've already identified a potential CSRF vulnerability. Now to exploit it. So third, we need to redirect a victim user account to that URL and have that action performed on the account. If the action is performed, then you've successfully identified and exploited a CSRF vulnerability. Oh, and since this is a multi-stage attack, I'm going to take this opportunity to show you how to change several of the techniques we've learned so far into a working exploit. So let's get started. We're going to be using Damn Vulnerable Web App for this demonstration, and before we get started, we're going to want to set the DVWA security setting to low. This will give us the simplest environment to work with. Now, the first thing you want to do with any new application you're trying to break is to get an idea of what the underlying source code looks like. Here, we have a page that allows us to change our user account password. We just need to type in our new password twice to verify, and our password is changed. Pretty straightforward. Ignoring the fact that the web application is using a GET request to send sensitive information, we see that these are the only two parameters being sent to the server. We can even look at the page source and see that, sure enough, there's nothing else that the server needs to know to change the user's password. That means that if we were able to redirect a user to this page, either through social engineering or cross-site scripting, we could set their password to be any value that we decide. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to chain together a couple of different techniques which will allow us to take over any account on the server. First, let's take the CSRF link and set the password to a value of our choosing. Then, we'll use a cross-site scripting payload to redirect a victim to this CSRF link. Hmm. Now, where can we put this cross-site payload so that the user will see it? Well, if you remember earlier in the cross-site scripting video, we found a stored cross-site vulnerability in the guestbook. Let's copy it and paste it in there. But wait, it doesn't paste in the full payload. Why is that? There must be a character limit in the page. Let's crack open Burp Suite and get past this restriction. Don't forget to set your proxy in the browser. Now we can intercept the request. Paste the full payload into the MTX message parameter and forward the request. If we jump back to our browser, we can see that our payload is running and that it will redirect us to change our password automatically. We can verify that our password's been changed by logging out and logging back in with the new password that we put in our cross-site payload. Okay, here's the fun part. What if we try to do this to attack a different user? Since we put our cross-site code into a stored location, any user who visits that page will automatically have their password changed too. For instance, Let's log in as leap1337 with the password charlie to see this in action. If we go to the stored XSS section, boom, we're greeted with a message and our password is changed. Just like last time, we can verify this by logging out and logging back in with our payload password. So what we were able to do was abuse a cross-site scripting vulnerability to send a user to a CSRF vulnerability page to change their password and compromise their account. We weren't able to do all of this directly in the browser, so we used Burp Suite to bypass the client-side parameter restriction. 
One of the most fun and interesting things about hacking and penetration testing is trying to find different ways that we can combine multiple techniques together like this to exploit new vulnerabilities or to discover more complex vulnerabilities that we can take advantage of. But for now, let's reset everything back to default and talk about how to prevent CSRF vulnerabilities in your applications. On the surface, CSRF is very easy to mitigate, but sometimes problems come from the implementation of these mitigation strategies. So let's walk through the list and talk about the specific things to watch out for. These are just general recommendations for CSRF prevention. Verify the origin of the request, reauthenticate to perform privileged actions, and check CSRF tokens. In practice, CSRF vulnerabilities can be exploited by redirecting a user to an attacker site and having the request coming from there impact the victim server. To prevent this, you should check the referrer header and the X forwarded host header to make sure that the request is coming from the original website. Now, as you might have noticed in our example, we were able to exploit this vulnerability directly on the original website. So in this case, checking the origin wouldn't have prevented our attack. This is why you also need to implement at least one of these next two strategies. If you want user interaction, forced reauthentication is a good way to ensure that the users themselves are the ones making the request. To bypass this, an attacker would have to know the user credentials and would therefore prevent CSRF specific attacks. If you don't want user interaction, CSRF tokens are the way to go. Just like session tokens, CSRF tokens need to be randomly generated on a per request basis because if they are persistent, or if they can be predicted, then the entire mitigation strategy could fall apart. In addition, you need to properly link CSRF tokens to a user's session so that it can be verified from the web request. Oh, and one last thing. If you're thinking that all of this can be prevented with a post request instead of a get, here's an example code snippet that performs CSRF via post. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. For more information, check out the links in the description below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this. I'll see you next time.